Hi, this is Ben. Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a short video on a new workflow that I use to design guitars in Fusion 360. I refer to this approach as the design model stock approach. So basically, I have three top level components, a design component, and I put all of my sketches inside there. Uh, but I also put my construction planes and canvases in there. And then there's a model level component where basically all it is are components or subcomponents and their bodies. And then a third level, which is stock, where I have my stock components and the sketches and any construction planes perhaps that are used uh, to design the stock. So let's take a look at that in Fusion 360. So this is a uh, Fusion 360 model of an acoustic guitar that I'm building on CNC. And I'm using this design model stock approach. So you can see when I have the browser fully collapsed here, I have just three components, a design component, a model component, and a stock component. Um, let's look at the design component first. And if I open that up, I've got basically three folders inside there, my canvases, my sketches, and my construction planes. And I happen to have gone in here and turned everything on so you can see um, there's a lot of stuff there involved in, in creating the bodies for this guitar. Um, but the nice thing is we can flip them all off at once by just turning off the design high level component and then turning on the model level component. So what I used to do is for each of these components that's within model, um, you know, say I've got a fretboard and a neck. Uh, let's just look at those two. Um, within each of those, I would have usually put um, all of the sketches to, you know, to make these bodies. Uh, but I no longer do that. So the nice thing about that is let's go to uh, the fretboard and activate that. You can see now I've got a very nice uh, compact timeline for the fretboard. Um, if I look at just the, the neck, I've got a very small timeline for the neck. And you can see there's no sketches or construction geometry in that timeline. All of that goes back to the design timeline. So if I hide the model, I can activate the design timeline, which uh, isn't really that bad either because it doesn't have any features in it. So, uh, in reality, you wouldn't have all of this stuff on at once. So I'll turn off uh, the canvases and construction. And generally, you might be working on three or four sketches at once. Um, you know, like say, for instance, I'm working on the headstock. Uh, I'm going to turn off everything but the headstock sketches. Okay, so there are all the sketches involved in the headstock. I think I've got some extra ones in here too. Let's see, heel end, yeah. Okay, so generally I might have those three or four sketches on when I'm extruding and lofting and creating this headstock. Um, but the nice thing is I can leave that state, um, basically, if I just turn off design, and now turn on my neck. So I'm going to go to model and have the neck on. Um, I can go back and forth between my model and sketches just by doing this, which I find very handy. So those are two big reasons for this approach. One, you've got simpler timelines. And two, you can go back and forth between sketches and construction geometry and canvases. Um, all at once and go back to your model all at once. But the other thing is you can maintain the state. For instance, let's say I was uh, in the model, I was looking at the neck and fretboard, okay, and I want to turn all my sketches off. Um, I've got just the neck and fretboard on here. Then I can turn them off and go back into my sketches that are involved in creating that. So let's take a look at the stock component. So I'm going to hide my design and my model is hidden. I'll collapse those two also. 
and then activate stock. So in here, I've got stock that I've drawn for each of the components. Let's say uh, for the neck, here's a piece of stock that is actually, I like to use this transparency because then what I can do is I can go to the model and turn on my neck. So I'm going to hide the fretboard and just have the neck in. So now I'm viewing both the stock and the model. And so this way I can make sure, you know, is the stock big enough um, to encompass my model. And I actually set the opacity level right here at the top level. So if I wanted to really see the stock um, in a non-opaque form, I can just, you know, modify it right here. Um, so let's turn the model off and collapse that. And so within stock, I do go ahead and use the sketches um, inside components. And this is the approach I used to take when doing the modeling. Um, I don't see a reason for moving the sketches out because generally I'll go in and model the stock and have very few changes to it unless the model itself uh, becomes too big for the stock. Um, so the sketches and any construction planes or anything else that are needed, generally all I have is sketches and bodies, but that's going to be within each subcomponent within the stock. And generally I'd be looking at one of these pieces at a top at a time. Let's say we're looking at the top stock. Um, turn the next stock off. And that piece of stock you can see is not not transparent. So if I make stock 30% transparent and then go to my model and turn the top on in the model. You can see the two kind of correspond there. Oh, let me turn my model. There it is. Okay. So there's the top. Let me hide the neck. So um, sitting within its stock and the stock being transparent. So when I go to manufacture, um, since I've modeled all the pieces of stock, um, Let's look at one of these setups. Uh, let's go to the neck top. Um, so now when I double click and edit this setup, let me pull this open a little bit. There we go. Um, and go to stock. I actually pick stock from my model. And not just from the model, but inside the stock component within the model. So that allows me to see it very quickly here um, within the manufacturing side. I know that all of my stock components are within this kind of master level stock component um, in the tree. So a quick review of the pros and the cons of this approach. Um, the advantage is you can basically do one click to hide all of your sketches construction planes and canvases. And you can do the same for all of your uh, model bodies. Um, you can hide all of those at once. Uh, you have very simple timelines because the model timelines do not include the sketches and the design timeline has basically sketches and construction planes in it. Um, it's easier to select stock, I think, in the manufacturing side because you've got a high level stock component and all of your uh, sub components are inside there. And you can also uh, set the opacity at that top level component so that you can dim out your stock and look at it at the same time as looking at your model. Um, the downsides are that the sketches are all grouped together in a timeline. Um, and they're all grouped together in one folder. So you have a lot more sketches than you might have if you distribute the sketches inside uh, each component that they apply to. Um, but I find that as long as you name your sketches appropriately, they're easy enough to find. Uh, the second disadvantage is that you really have to activate 
the proper component before you do certain things, especially making sketches in construction planes. For instance, you would have to go to the design component and activate that. Um, but as long as you catch it uh, shortly after you do it, you can usually drag uh, a sketch that's created in the wrong spot into the design component and it usually works. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions about this workflow, please leave them in the comments below and I will get back with you and talk to you all soon.